very warm welcome to Raflims this is Swaro Hosain and today we will learn an important topic in digital library system series so we'll talk about the dspace in detail we'll discuss the history of dspace features of dspace community and resources of dspace so this is an important video if you want to learn about dspace you must watch it first i will talk about the history of dspace most of the people said that dura space and d space they both are the same thing no dura space is one of the organization whereas d space is an institutional repository application so talk about dura space first dura space was founded in may 2009 when the fedora commons organization and the d space foundation joined together so dura space is actually a result of merger of fedora commons organization and the d space foundation in 2009 so both were the largest provider of open source repository software for managing and providing access to digital content in july 2019 dura space merged with lyrisis become a division of that organization now lyrisis is the parent organization and legal entity dura space is actually uh, working as a division of lyrisis with the responsibility for community developed software programs So let's see why Dura Space merged with Lyrisis. They both two leading not-for-profit organization. Lyrisis and Dura Space were merged to participate in developing new scalable technologies, shared innovation opportunities, and high-value, fairly priced services across the global landscape of academic and public libraries, scholarly research, archives. museums and galleries the dura space along with lyrisis lead these open source projects so there are three actually the fedora d space vivo so they are actually the projects of a uh, dura space and lyrisis with more than 2500 users worldwide in 120 countries so the fedora is actually the uh, one of the flexible modular open source repository platform with native link data support and dspace is actually trunky institutional repository application we'll talk about the dspace in detail so dspace is one of the project of dura space and lyrisis so So another project is Vivo. Vivo is a linked data application for research discovery. Vivo creates an integrated record of the scholarly work of your organization. So Dura Space and Lyrisis provide these services on subscription basis. So they are actually Archive Direct, DSpace Direct and Dura Cloud. These services are built on solid open source software platform can be set up quickly with expert staff so dura cloud if you have a space problem if you have server problem so you can have dura cloud dura cloud is actually a hosted service that control where and how your content is preserved in the cloud so dspace direct if this is something like you have dspace uh with a vendor Uh, uh services as well so dspace direct is a hosted trunky repository solution and similar archive direct archive direct is a complete hosted uh archiving solution so they are the services on a very reasonable price so dspace is one of the trunky institutional repository application So let us see what is Trunky application. First of all, the so Trun Trunky is actually Trun a key system, a computer system that has been customized for a particular application. The term derives from the idea that the end user can just turn a key 
and the system is ready to go. Trunky systems include all the necessary software for the particular application. So this is what the concept of trunk a key software or system. So talk about DSpace. DSpace is a trunky institutional repository application. DSpace is the software of choice for academic, non-profit and commercial organization building open digital repositories. It is free and easy to install out of the box and completely customizable to fit the need of any organization. DSpace preserves and enables easy and open access to all type of digital content including text, images, moving images, MPEGs and dataset. So DSpace software will focus on institutional repository use case, be lean, align and flexible, be easy and simple to install and operate, include a core set of functionalities that can be extended. So we will talk about in detail features top reason to use DSpace. So the very first reason and the top reason to use DSpace is actually the largest community of users and developers worldwide. DSpace has over 1000 organizations that are currently using DSpace software in a production or project environment. So this is most important actually. The most common use is by the research libraries as an institutional repository. However, there are many organizations using the software to host and manage subject-based repositories, dataset repositories, or media-based repositories. So, uh, so a complete list of registered users available on this web address is duraspace.org uh, backslash registry backslash dspace. So you can even register your library if you are using DSpace. So you can register your institutional repository. So anyhow, so move on. The second reason is actually free and open source software. So DSpace is completely free. I mean the FOSS. So the DSpace open source platform is available for free to anyone and can be downloaded from GitHub. So the code is currently uh, licensed under the BSD open source license. What does it mean? This means that the, any organization can use, modify, or even integrate the code into their commercial applications without paying any license fee. So this is the, I mean the, I mean, amazing thing so it's free and also open source dspace software is managed by a smaller group of volunteer developers that work together to plan release and integrate new features and bug fix submitted by the community so if you want to work voluntarily or and you are a developer so you can actually join the dspace so another feature of DSpace, it's completely customizable to fit your needs. Customize or theme the user interface. You can actually fully customize the look and feel of your DSpace website. So it will integrate seamlessly with your institutional website and can be intuitive for your, for your user. DSpace provides two main user interface options. The traditional one is JSP based uh, and the mannequin XML base, which provides various themes out of the box. Not only theme and user interface, you can customize the metadata. Doubling Co is the default metadata format within DSpace application. However, you can add or change any field to customize it for your application. DSpace currently support any non-hierarchical flat name space, but you can actually use some 
hierarchical metadata scheme into DSpace such as mock or modes. Uh, for this purpose, you need to work on crosswalk or some other applications to map uh, uh, the transfer of data. So if you want to learn about the uh, difference between cataloging and metadata schemes, so you can watch the video in i button and also in description of this video. So you can configure browse and search. You can decide what field you would like to display for browsing uh, such as author, title, date, etc. on your DSpace website. You can also select any metadata field you would like to include it in the search interface. All of the text within a given item and metadata associated with the item are indexed for full text search if desired. So this is really an important feature of these. Okay. Local authentication mechanism. DSpace come with plugins for most university authentication methods, including LDAP and hierarchical LDAP. So this is actually most important about the authentication mechanism. And IP base is also available. And DSpace come with its own internal authentication method and multiple uh, authentication methods can be configured at once. For example, you are using LDAP and you want to use uh, DSpace own uh, authentication methods, so you can use it. And even you can plug in your 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 own design uh, authentication methods if you want to. So that was actually about the authentication method. So if you want to add some authentication methods. For example, single signing LDAP, you can use your user ID and password or whatever. So you can actually uh, configure that. DSpace complies with uh, many standard protocols for access, ingest, and export. The standard DSpace support includes OAI, PMH, OAI, ORE, SWORD, Web Dev. Open Search, Open URL, RSS, Autumn. So they are actually some standard name. Configurable database. So you can select Postgres or Oracle as a database of your DSpace system. And the default language DSpace web application is available in over 20 languages. So if English is not your local language, you can actually customize the language with DSpace. Use so this is about language and uh, let's move on. So uh, this is most important used by educational, government, private and commercial institution. DSpace platform is used by higher education institution for whom the platform was initially developed while also showing a much broader appeal uh, the software has been used by museum, state, archives, national libraries, journal repositories, consortiums and commercial companies to manage their digital assets. Can be installed out of the box. DSpace come with an easy configurable web based interface which any System administrator can install on a single Linux, Mac, OS X or Windows box to get started. So you can use a, a virtual machine to just get started uh, for practice purpose only. If you would like to try out DSpace uh, before installing, visit uh, DSpace uh, demonstration site. Uh, which is actually a fully functional demo install of DSpace. Of so and the list of prerequisites is also available in documentation we'll talk about the documentation can manage and preserve all types of digital content yes dspace application can recognize and manage a large number of file format uh, some of the most common format 
currently managed within the DSpace environment are PDF, Word, JPEG, MPEG, uh, TIFF files. Uh, and uh, you can actually add your uh, uh, file format if there's not available in DSpace, unrecognized format, so that it can be identified in future. So the community after the features, how you can get involved within the DSpace users community. Currently, there are over 1000 instances of DSpace running worldwide. So you are actually in a good company. You can get involved with the DSpace user community by visiting this web. I mean, website is available. Eurospace.org backslash dspace backslash community so you there you can actually register your dspace instance uh, join the community mailing list become a member and take part in the project government so you need to register there actually additional support while registered service the registered service i think it's not freely available so you have to pay something for the registered service Resources are available here on this website, eurospace.org backslash dspace backslash resources. And there you can find the frequent ask questions, developers resources, technical specifications, list of dspace services provider, posted dspace and the contact details about dspace. Okay, the content I have used for this presentation is from the dspace website let me show you the website so okay here we are so the web address is dspace it's durespace.org backslash dspace d u r a s p a c e dot o r g backslash dspace and there you actually can see uh this is actually the lattices and the d space and you can read more about the d space and you even you can download here and you can have a tour d space and this is actually a tutorial website oh sorry video so you can learn more about the eSpace, the features, the community and resources all are available here and uh, lots of resources available here community news and events and dspace 7 is available okay So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I'm Faro Hussain and you are watching Raflim.